<clears throat> okay, my name is Sandra Williams. My full name is Sandra Dutro Perky Williams. That's what happens in our culture. You know, you accumulate names through life. And I have lost Creek Mushroom Farm with my husband, uh, Doug Williams. And we uh, used to grow shiitake mushrooms. Now we sell grow your own shiitake mushroom log kits. I'm not here to sell. I do have to do a little commercial, you know, in the, in the, in the, when you're just going to sleep, uh, how that little voice comes up and says, you didn't put in anything about your products. It was my self-protective financial security voice. <clears throat> so I'll uh, make my commercial pitch. It's not even a pitch. I'll just show you what we do at the end. I'm here at this conference because I edited Dan Burns' book, Saving Ben, a Father's Story of Autism. And it won the Mayborn Award uh, in Texas, and it was published by University of uh, North Texas Press. And <clears throat> I've known Dan and his wife Susan since ninth grade. We've been friends all these years. And Ben was born when Susan was 40. And she, <laughs> she said to me, well, I've finished all my life script. I've done everything I was supposed to do. Now uh, I'm going to do motherhood again. And she did, and Ben was born, and he is severely uh, disabled. He has severe autism. He's 24, 23 or 24 now. And uh, he doesn't talk. But about maybe a month ago or six weeks ago, he made eye contact with me and sustained it for the first time in all these years that I've known him, and we played a little eye contact game. So that was just wonderful, and that's my connection here. Dan brought me to this conference, and I was talking to people about mushrooms, and, um, and here I am. This is kind of my coming out party because I channel mushrooms. I talk to the mushrooms, and the mushrooms talk to me, and this is the first time I've said it out loud in front of people who were not related to me by friendship or blood. <clears throat> and thank you for coming. Um, I don't know that what the mushrooms say is true, so I'm relying on parents for feedback. Oh, did you all get a chart, get a handout? Over there. Would you just bring them over and pass them out when you come? And would you all please sit over here so I can only have to talk in one direction? Well, I don't want to exclude anybody. Okay, so we went into the mushroom business about 20 years ago, <clears throat> and uh, everything has been going just fine. We were just moving right along. And I, I had an issue... Uh, in 2009, and I went to an intuitive counselor who is, a, her name is Eileen Hetherington in Oklahoma City, and she is an intuitive counselor and a certified herbalist and also a massage therapist. And in the middle of my reading, she said, oh, just a minute, the nature spirits are coming through. The mushroom deva wants to talk to you. And she said, they say, we are people too. And we are tired of being thought of just for fuel. We bring magical, and here they didn't mean like psilocybin mushrooms, but we bring magical spiritual gifts to humans, and we want them to know about it, and we want you to tell them. Um, <clears throat> that was pretty scary, but I did it anyway. And I came back to Eileen for a number of months. And what would happen is she would drop her head, and go into a complete trance, and when she brought her head up, a new personality would be there. Each mushroom had its own facial expression, it had its own, it had its own voice, and it had its own speech pattern, it had its own muscular tension, it had its own gestural expression, and I had no doubt that it was someone else speaking. And this went on for some months, and finally, in a... August of 2010, she said, well, the mushrooms aren't going to talk to me anymore. They're only going to talk to you. Oh, please. You know, I am a, um, <clears throat> I'm a person with a PhD. I am a person who uh, 
has a certain place in my community, and if people think I'm talking to mushrooms, you know, I'm going to lose credibility, I'm going to lose friends. Uh, so far, that's only happened in a minuscule amount. But I didn't tell anybody for a long time, and it was two years before I had the personal courage to actually talk to a mushroom. Now, mushrooms are right outside my door. I have a farm. I'm a member of the shiitake clan, and I would not go 200 yards out my door and talk to mushrooms. I felt foolish. So we went on vacation in Lake Tahoe, where nobody knows me. <laughs> I was in the woods, and, and Doug said, oh, come here, there's some mushrooms I want to show you. So there were some, some yellow mushrooms on a stump, and I said to Doug, Doug, I'm going to talk to these mushrooms. Now, you stay here, because what if I go into a trance? I won't know what I said. So you stay here and uh, listen, and then you can tell me what I said. So I walk up to the mushrooms, and I say, Hello, I'm Sandra. I'm uh, in the shiitake clan. And Doug just walked away. And I said, Can I talk to you? And I hear giggling, like 12-year-old girls giggling. And I said, <clears throat> I didn't know what to say. I said, I didn't even say hello, hardly. I said, what, what do you do for humans? What gifts do you bring? And they said, oh, we heal the corrupted heart. Well, I went right away to greed and hatred. And they said, no, 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 it's corrupted. It's a corroded, corroded heart. We can heal the corroded heart lining of the heart. And I saw a picture of a heart. And um, the way this kind of communication works is they have to take things that I know and I'll recognize. Um, right, things that I'm going to know. So I had a background in anatomy and physiology. So here was a real heart. And then the camera sort of panned in. The heart lining was you know, uh, had little dips and cuts in it like rusty, like a thin line of rusty iron. And I said, well, are you edible? I didn't have a taste in my mouth, but my face went. I said, well, how would a person take you? And the word distillation appeared across my field of vision. So I said, thank you. And what spiritual gifts? do you bring? Well, this was a new stump, and all the mushrooms came from the same stem and branched out like that. And they said, oh, solidarity. And I said, thank you. And then there was more giggling, and that was it. And when I got, I didn't tell, I only told my family who, <laughs> my, my son who's going, don't say this in front of my children. And his mother was a primary player in the, in the spiritual movement in Oklahoma City, but that's all hush in his part of the family. So he said, okay, all right, just don't, don't, just don't say that in front of my children. So <clears throat> I had been back in Oklahoma, I think this was January, and I went to a spa for, that has a huge variety of energy medicine treatment available. And I told this story, he was the first person that I told it to um, outside of my friends and family. And he said, I wish we knew more about that because I have a friend who has a uh, corroded heart lining right now. So I wish I knew more about it. And I'm, I want there to be research and I want this kind of information to stimulate investigation because no one looks at much, not no one, People are looking at mushrooms more. So <clears throat> that's my story of how I got here. Uh, I've been a speech teacher. My degrees are in communication. And I know the rules of speech. One is that you only have one purpose. To inform, to demonstrate, to persuade, to impress. But the real mastery, a real master, breaks the rules with artistry and has a more effective presentation. So I have three purposes today. One is to impress you that mushrooms 
and of course we're talking about food and supplements, that mushrooms have real value in terms of nutrition, health, and medicinal applications. That's my first goal. So I have included that scientific evidence for you. Uh, I'm not a scientist. I take it from other books. I used to read original research, but I don't have time for that. This, this is one of the things that I do. So I read the summaries, and I brought some of that to you. Everything is not on here. Everything is, everything is in this handout, and I brought some. I'm not going to give it to you now because I don't want you to read along. So there's some here, and if there are not enough, then if you will sign up, I'll email to you. So <clears throat> uh, I think you will be impressed with the power and efficacy of the variety of mushrooms that we're talking about today. Second, my second purpose is to inform you about what the mushrooms have to say. Uh, we know about, there, a lot of, a lot of no, is known. These are very um, specific mushrooms, and um, we know a lot about them. There are about between 600 and 700 mushrooms that have been studied pretty deeply. The ones that you're going to see today are some of the most investigated. So my third purpose then is to ask you, if you use these mushrooms, uh, let me know what you know so that we can share among ourselves what's, what's working. Okay. <clears throat> this is what got me started in terms of autism. The first time that the Enoki mushroom spoke through Eileen, he said, we see little beings, humans who suffer from mind disease, which makes them not want to belong to humans, even their families. Now, I did not ask about autism at this time. And, and if they can't understand it, because they're bound together at the root, they're like the Borgs, you know, one thought, one mushroom thinks one thought, the whole clan thinks it. And then another mushroom, the lion's mane, just spoke up about autism. And you'll see that later. Uh, but this is, was uh, an astonishing thing to me. And it was the first step in really thinking about mushrooms and autism. These are the mushrooms we're going to be looking at. Um, maitake. This is an amazing mushroom. It's, this mushroom said, we can heal anything as long as the person wants to thrive. If a person's disease or disorder is their exit out of this life, then we will not interfere. So, uh, and it's a, a very potent immunostimulant. Uh, white button mushrooms, this is the one you see every day. Uh, it's on your pizza, it's in the stores, blah, blah. You know this, you've known this mu uh, mushroom all your life. This is the reishi. It is one of the oldest mushrooms that we know about, and it has been in use for thousands of years for its uh, immune system, uh, stimulation and modulation. They didn't call it that, of course. They just called it <laughs> healing, the healing mushroom, the spiritual mushroom, the mushroom of longevity. It has many names. Um, it was almost eradicated because the Chinese emperor sent out ships all over the known world to gather all the mushrooms they could find. So uh, it's a, it grows, actually it grows here in the U.S., was very prolific in Asia. Shaggy mane, this is one that grows in your yard. It turns black. You know the one I'm talking about? It comes up white, in two or three days it turns black. Okay, this is shaggy mane. This is enoki. You can see here how the root is all together. And they each bunch perceive themselves as one unit. Uh, shiitake mushroom. This, uh, the, the fabulous four are the maitake, the rishi, the shiitake, which is an immunostimulant and has a tremendous range of uh, medicinal purposes. Uh, this is what we grow. This is growing on logs <clears throat> as we grow them. We cut the logs in the spring, and I'm sorry, in the winter when the sap is down. We drill holes. We inject the seed material called spawn, 
into the holes and then um, it takes 8 to 12 months for them to colonize the entire log and then they'll grow. Uh, lion's mane, this is a mushroom that grows wild. You can't buy it in stores very often. You might be able to find it at farmer's markets. And uh, I learned about lion's mane as an anti-anxiety from a young man with Asperger's. And it was sort of like the second clue came to me. Uh, oyster mushrooms, these are uh, fast growing in popularity worldwide. There's a huge third world um, agricultural movement uh, to grow oyster mushrooms. And we work with mushrooms in Ghana, in uh, Techiman, Ghana, West Africa, teaching um, farmers how to improve their productivity. And we're also introducing shiitake logs. And this is cordyceps, which is not a mushroom. It's a fungus that grows on caterpillars. It's gross and disgusting. Process, the mushroom itself is amazing. Um, but we won't spend too much time on that. Uh, these you can buy at the store. Enoki you can find, shiitake you can find, oyster mushrooms you can find. Uh, you can gather, actually, rishi, maitake, shaggy mane, lion's mane, oyster mushrooms. Um, uh, but probably the best way is to buy blocks or kits and grow your own if you want fresh mushrooms. All of these are available in supplement form. Rishi and cordyceps are primarily in supplement form because they're not actually table food. All the rest of these are foods, just nutrient-dense foods. This is my disclaimer. <laughs> I called Field and Forest Products, which is a research institute, and asked if I could use their photographs because we do business with them. And they said, is this research? I said, no, no, this is psychic. This is channeled. He said, well, just put a disclaimer in there that we don't, we don't stand behind that. <laughs> well, you never know. It could happen, you know. So there's my disclaimer. Okay, much of the information is received with direct communication, and I hope that you will provide feedback to me if you try them. Now, <clears throat> Oh, I want to say I'm not going to focus on the science because it's too deep. There's too much and there's too it's too deep. Uh, and I'm going to go through that part pretty quickly uh, because I want you to know what the mushrooms themselves say. And this is on your handouts, and uh, it's also my sequence at Yahoo, I think, is in the catalog. I just did mushrooms for ASD right before I came, so I'll look for you there. Right. I'm a psychic, and I see mushrooms in your future. I really can't and don't foretell the future. What I do is I talk to, I talk to mushrooms. Okay, how much do I give my children? Well, you know, the tablets say, the, the bottle says so many tablets, but that's based on average weight of a male human. So how do you know? Well, you, may, you need a method of discernment. I say this as a person in the world. We all need methods of discernment. <laughs> I was talking to Dan about it, and he said, oh, yes, when I have a question, I ask a question, and I see a red light, a yellow light, or a green light. I said to one woman, uh, we were talking about it, and I said, uh, well, I can teach you muscle testing, kinesiology. And she said, well, when something is true or right or good for me, my forefinger finger moves. If it's not good for me, my thumb moves. One man said to me, my stomach never lies. Each of us has inside of us methods of discernment. I was uh, doing one of those games where you try to guess whether the card is red or black, and I closed my eyes, I put my hands on the black card. This eye was kind of heavy. I put my hands on the red card, I got a little flutter right here. And then when they turned the cards over, you know, I guessed nine correctly in a row. And then I freaked out. <laughs> so we have that inside of us. If you don't know what it is, there are tested, proven, ancient methods such as dowsing and, um, and also uh, kinesiology 
muscle testing. You know, I've seen people do that. And I was in a store one time, and the lady was doing this over every single vitamin in the shelf. <laughs> and so, um, and I have resources for how to learn those on the handout. Okay. Okay, this is the handout, and I said you can, rather than go online and download and blah, 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 you can just email me. And uh, I probably am only short a few this morning. So here's what that looks like. And there's a huge amount of information. And at first I had it all in my PowerPoint and we were going to be here for three hours. So I've condensed it. And um, there's, uh, just, there's about the same information on the slides today, but there's more on the handout. Okay, you can see how we're talking. There's a lot going on. All right, this is my main resource, the fungal pharmacy, because it just came out. And it has a summaries of the latest research. So this was my primary, um, my primary source. And you know what? There are channeled messages in that book. I'm not alone. I cried when I read that because I thought I was the only person in the world. I guess it's kind of arrogant. <laughs> the only person in the world who was talking to mushrooms. Also, Growing Gourmet and Medicinal Mushrooms by Paul Stamets. And you may have heard of him. Uh, he is among the top mycologists and mushroom experts in the world today. And he is really famous for his mycoremediation uh, proposals. They are wiping up uh, oil spills with oyster mushrooms. Um, there's this, and, and there's a, a way that oyster mushrooms uh, will clean the soil that has been uh, polluted and contaminated by pig elimination. <laughs> so um, uh, some of the information comes from his book also, Medicinal Mushrooms by Christopher Hobbs, and these two books, Shiitake, The Healing Mushroom, and uh, Rishi, uh, The Ancient Herb for Modern Times. Why mushrooms for autism? In general, they stimulate or strengthen the, or modulate the immune system. And you can read the rest of it. And Aloha Medicinals has a number of uh, concentrated liquid mushroom products. And you can buy them online. Autism and the immune system. And this is uh, John Hicks, who's here now, and he spoke yesterday about biofilms. Uh, we were visiting last year about mushrooms, and he said, well, uh, this, you know, people on autism have to have a TH2 shift. Whoa, I didn't know that. And so I asked him to explain it to me, and this is his explanation. Are we good? All right, here we go. We're starting now. White button mushrooms. This is the most consumed mushroom in the world. For a long time, I thought there was nothing in them. And it is true that they have been severely depleted by massive, massive growing techniques on non-nutrient media. And still they grow and still they have stuff. It's, uh, it's amazing how they're still going. They don't like it. They said, we are losing our souls because we are not growing on our own, um, on our own nutrients. They grow on, uh, where I live, over 100,000 pounds a week are grown on chicken poop and straw. Minerals. The ones in uh, italics are the ones that they are particularly um, strong in. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. You don't need to take any notes. All of this and more is available to you. Yeah. And you can't keep it, I can't keep it straight. So, I, this, remember this is a part of impression. I want to impress you that they are 
useful, viable, important. They are a choice that you can make in all the things that you do uh, for your children. One more option. Now, they do contain carcinogenic hydrazines. Nobody knows how much it takes to make a difference. Some people say the benefit outweighs the possible danger. Uh, I don't think anyone has ever died from white button mushroom poisoning, but, um, you, well, you just, you just don't know. So I do want to put that out. Uh, one person said, I'm not going to eat these mushrooms because they're unhappy, and their unhappy energy gets in me. And I, I think that could be true. Okay, white button mushrooms speak about their gifts to everyone, that they're good for children and they can assist a child in knowing its proper social place. They can assist with knowing the boundaries. They help balance expression. And they help one connect to the natural world. And they say, <clears throat> we help with ungluing, the ability to move outside of stuck behaviors, reduce the need for repeated behaviors, Prettiness as well, a gentling of expression in movement. These are gifts we can bring to the children who are on the other side of a border and which it is hard for us on this side of the border to understand. It is hard for friends and families, so it is hard for the little ones who are driven by their bodies as they are driven by certain explosive sounds, feelings, impressions, and for which they have no response except to waggle and beat and flay their hands and feet and nod their heads. And yet, under all of that is a bright child who smiles, but the outside keeps the insides hidden. This makes us sad as we see the whole, the essence of that child, and we are glad that we can create or cause a relaxation of the urges and reduction of the urges that do not have discernment in expression. And their metaphor is an ice cream cone Ice cream in the cone, solid. The ice cream melts, relaxes over the boundaries of the cone. It softens and flows, still sweet and luscious, but no longer held by frozenness to a rigid form. The white button mushroom. Shiitake mushrooms. Uh, they are grown in two ways, on uh, sawdust. Oops. On sawdust blocks, which you can get and put in your home, and they're very prolific. They'll produce a, uh, three or four crops, and uh, then they're also grown on logs. The log-grown uh, shiitakes have been demonstrated in recent three to five times the potency, the medicinal potency, because they have more protoplasm. They also are eating their own food, their natural food. And so they are more potent and more available to the body. But they're both good. All shiitakes are good. Log-grown shiitakes are better. It's the second most consumed mushroom in the world. It's used as a medicine in the US, Japan, China, Australia, and more. In Japan, it's the first line of defense, along with reishi mushroom and concentrate, uh, administered on and off. Uh, and it's the first line of defense. The, they administer the shiitake reishi combination that gets most moderate and early cancers. The body does it because the immune system is built up and the body heals itself. The second step, if there's still cancer, the second step is chemo and radiation, but they don't have the side effects that we have because their immune systems are strong. They don't get secondary infections like we do. And then if they're still cancer, then they go to surgery. They have a 92% cure rate of all cancers. The flavor of shiitake is, the texture is meaty. The flavor is, uh, is pungent and strong, not strong like ick, but it's a strong flavor, not like white button mushrooms that are mild and delicate. It will take on the flavors of the foods that it's cooked with. Um, on the culinary day, 
Shireen Ross Ingram said her child likes brown and crunchy, and you can just let these cook slowly at about 200. Well, I, I saute them first, and then I cook them to serve at. I just heat them up to serve at shows and fairs. Time we, by the time we're, uh, oops, <laughs> by the time we're done with one round, they're brown and crunchy. And they will maintain their nutrient and metabolic values up to 325 degrees. So, which part? Oh, about you? <laughs> well, we saute them first, you know, and then we take them sauteed to the show so we don't have to actually cook them. So we saute them in garlic, in, um, with a little garlic powder and uh, olive oil and butter. And then uh, that's salt and pepper. And then you can freeze them or refrigerate them. And they'll keep frozen like that for about six months. So as we're giving people samples, you know, and the crowd slows down and they sit there in the pan, they get brown and crunchy. And they're, they're really very good. We never go home with any. <laughs> people always come and clean them up for us. Okay, here we go. Nutritional and chemical constituents. A friend of mine who's a shiitake researcher, he said, I watched the shiitake actually eat a tumor in a Petri dish. It absolutely devoured it. And I have to ask you not to ask me any scientific questions, please. Because I cut and pasted. <laughs> okay? All right, and this is, uh, this is what we know. They strengthen and stimulate the immune system. Self-free extracts uh, uh, of liquid fermentation inhibited growth of candida. And the mushroom juice was found to have pronounced effect on candida streptococcus and E. coli without affecting healthy intestinal bacteria. This is what the shiitake say about ASD. We can offer the strengthening of the immune system. More than that, we can provide a strengthening of the self, knowledge of rootedness and being less distant, becoming more connected, less disconnected from self. And this connectedness, this rootedness, is subtle, but a presence. I want to talk about rootedness. You're going to see that word a lot. And until I sat down to do this presentation, I didn't realize how often and how important rootedness is in the relationship between humans and mushrooms. And we offer joy of the spirit. Um, this came... Uh, what, you're, what you're seeing now came as in February when I sat down and I asked each mushroom what they could bring. Um, <clears throat> but when the, when the shiitakes first spoke, they said, we can heal grief, especially grief from the past. And that's how our ancestors used them. Shiitake. Isn't that beautiful? I've been growing mushrooms for 25 years, and they're still so beautiful to me. I never get tired of them. Well, sometimes I get tired of eating them, but I don't get tired of looking at them. I took them one time to lower my cholesterol. <laughs> I had to eat them every day because I did a study in Japan where the women ate um, uh, 12 for 12 days, they ate 90 grams. That's like two or three mushrooms raw. Well, that was good for about five days. <laughs> I couldn't make it to the 12th, and I did everything. Okay, and this is Rishi Lingji Ganoderma lucidum. And you can now get Ganoderma coffee, Ganoderma tea, Ganoderma health bars. Um, and uh, it's, you, don't, you don't eat it. It's very tough and woody. It's edible, but it's very tough, very woody. So most people take it in capsule form or tea form or especially in liquid concentrate. This is the powerhouse of the mushroom world. Um, 
as I said, this is the one that almost got wiped out because the emperor sent out ships to get it. And you can grow them. Uh, you can buy them. They're available at Asian markets. And your handout has availability, too. So, All right, I'm just going to stand back. This is not everything. Can I go? Again, this is not everything. There's a, uh, one of those stories going around about research on cancer for um, uh, sawdust, for the scientists who were researching mushrooms, and they were taking the mushrooms, and some of them said that the sawdust grown were uh, as good as, no, I'm sorry, it was the, the traditional, I mean, our medicine, contemporary medicine versus mushroom medicine. All the mushroom medicine people outlived all the um, allopathic medicine doctors. Okay, it's an immunostimulant. It's calming for people with anxiety, sleeplessness, nervousness, a tonic, has low toxicity, it improves adrenal cortical function, and it helps combat infections. The Rishi, this is a growing block over here from Field and Forest Products. Whoop, 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 whoop. Come back, come back, come back. We offer reliance upon the root, there it is again, the root of self. We strengthen the psychic defenses. We strengthen the cells on every level. We energize within the human spirit the rightness and the trueness of living life to its fullest potential. Rishi, isn't that beautiful? Oyster mushrooms. They're being grown, as I said, in the third world for uh, economic sustainability. Everybody is able to grow mushrooms, to grow these mushrooms. They grow on agricultural waste. They'll grow on anything organic. I have a picture from Paul Stamets' books of them growing on uh, an upholstered chair. So they're very easy to grow. Unfortunately, anytime you have the blocks, um, there's a huge risk of contamination. The people can learn to handle contamination, but there's not enough spawn. Uh, uh, that's the seed material to go around. And in Mushrooms in Ghana Project, I guess I didn't say that, we have Mushrooms in Ghana Project. And um, so what we're doing is trying to find a way to build autoclaves because that's, that's what we're lacking. We're lacking autoclaves for um, making spawn. And this, there's a spawn shortage all over the world. <clears throat> Oyster mushrooms. You can buy these in the grocery store. You can buy them fresh and dried, and you can grow your own. You can also gather them. Nothing else, nothing else looks like them. Get your mushroom book, and you can gather them. Okay? There's my signal lady right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oyster mushrooms speak about ASD. They deal with parent. They re can reduce paranoia, fear, startlement. A greater ease is a good way to put it. Mastermind of God eases through the magic of mushrooms. Yes, lion's mane also, but a different leveling. This is of trust, faith in the wellness of all, safety in beingness. Lion's mane, my brothers and sisters, address worry. This is a much more physical state. This is a mental thinking state. Think of the soothing touch of a mother or father, not as a calmative overall, but as a reducer of the edge-like feeling that makes one jumpy, like when you are concentrating and the door opens and I go, 
It brings to a more solid footing, more solid ground, brings one to a more solid footing, more solid ground, less apt to spike in response to unexpected stimuli. Anything else for children with autism? We love them. We love all humanity. But our love, our attraction energy is very, very strong for those for whom we have an affinity to ease their condition. And oyster mushrooms have a delicate flavor uh, and they can be cooked in a variety of ways from soft to um, crunchy uh, and uh, the texture like noodles. Oyster mushrooms. Invite people to grow oyster mushrooms. We have much to offer and we are so willing to burst and speak and reach out. Can you sense different personalities in these mushrooms? Oyster mushrooms. Enoki. This is the one that, uh, that started me on this trail, so I'm very grateful. And here's one that I was uh, really glad to read. We can ease difficulty in absorbing the foods that the earth provides. They have more than 300 milligrams of potassium and more than 2 grams of fiber. 10% is a daily value. And they eat, eat them raw and they're crunchy. Cook them very lightly. If you cook them too much, they get sort of slimy and they slide down your throat like oysters. Um, <clears throat> and they said if uh, children don't like their taste, to dry it and then sprinkle it over their food. Then they have no flavor at all. Sprinkle it over or sprinkle it in. Enoki speaks about ASD. Little ones with autism especially have need of rootedness. They are almost overly rooted in a part of themselves that is deep, very deep, and of a singularity that is not available to others. Some have the capacity to be reached by animals, plants, energetic patterns that don't register with most humans. And in this is a valuable connective potential. But our significant contribution is in relating, opening the responsiveness to the family and close associations. Here we mean those whose connectivity is through love, not through duty or obligation, but through love. Ones who have come in trust and are trustworthy. In the eyes, minds, and hearts of many of these little ones, those are few. But family, yes, the shared roots. Oops, I'm ahead of myself. <clears throat> but family, yes, the shared roots. Again, again we say, those who come in love, acceptance, and even in, especially in joy to the disconnected little ones, well, disconnected older ones too, of course, with those who share the bases, the foundations of living with a disconnected one, we would expect to see more eye contact, more physical contact tolerance, more smiling and listening, a glance, a holding of attention, a softness, a softening. How will love get in and how will love express? Through the eyes, the crinkly, smiling eyes, and the gentle touch, the tenderness of touch, both ways, yes, both ways. We in Oki are bound together in our expression and we cherish that and we are extremely happy to give it to those whose lack of connectedness brings forth sorrow, sadness, frustration, longing. These feel like lack of love, but they are simply that the doors are not open. As you say, the windows of the soul are closed. But, but, but yes, look, they are not locked. They are not shuttered. We are giving a way, that sli a way for them that slides open the windows of connection, the windows that allow in the light of the eyes, both directions. Isn't that a lovely thing? Enoki. Maitake. This is the one who says they can heal anything. 
They're all called so-called hand of the woods, sheep's head, dancing mushroom, and uh, you can gather these. They have, uh, you know, in the pink room, they have that mushroom booth. They have my talk, dried my taki out there, and they had some turkey tail, uh, which we're not going to discuss here, and they had uh, also some reishi mushrooms. Okay, here are the health and medical applications. Our primary assistance is in the immune system. We have the effect of modulating diction and proprioceptive feedback, the sensory information specifically of touch. Also, we affect a heartfeltness of enjoyment, pleasure. We can foster a contentment. And this is amazing. The maitake will adapt itself to the individual. It's not like one set, one chemical composition that is the same for everybody. It fits itself to the specific individual and the condition that the individual is experiencing. So we are able more than most fungi to adapt or subfit, integrate to a person's individual, specific, and unique needs. We are the most flexible of our kind, and we can be a good fit for individuals who are wanting to, willing to, and able to express and experience more wholly, and that includes parents as well, not just for children. We brighten the inward feeling and the outlook for all concerned. You can find these at farmer's markets. You can buy kits and grow your own. And maitake is in every, it's one of the fabulous four, and it's in uh, every combination that you can get. And you can also get capsules and uh, liquid concentrates that are solely maitake. We feel blessed and grateful to offer this gift, especially as we see young humans and those who love them suffering. I'm astonished at the compassion that the mushrooms express and how often love comes up because you know they're people too they have feelings they have thoughts they have they have urges especially to help us they want to help us that's what they came here for they say and um, and they want to be able to do what they came for and to give what they have lion's mane uh, this also is something you want to grow and you want to eat it when it fruits, you can gather it uh, in the fall. It grows in a lot of places. Doug came in the house one day this big. He was carrying a lion's mane on his shoulder this big. Um, we ate on it for as long as we could. And I'm sorry now that I didn't cook it and freeze it and keep it. Paul Stamets calls it a brain food that increases intellect and nourishes the nervous system. Look, I don't know, I didn't point this out, but how many mushrooms have antifungal in them? And I, you know, I, th I know that they're specific. I don't know what the specific <clears throat> uh, characteristics are. But I can't tell you how many doctors have talked to me about not, or my friends, about not eating mushrooms if you have any kind of fungal or yeast infection when, in fact, mushrooms can resolve those. It's just a lack of knowledge. Lion's Mane speaks about ASD. For your little beings who have the affliction, that, and this is from 2010, their very first time they spoke, for your little beings who have the affliction that you are calling autism, we are helpful. We assist in helping them develop their personalities fully so that they may feel themselves correct in all of their creative activities. Many of them are particularly gifted in music or arts, and we can assist them in finding proper expression for this. And a father talked to me about this just the other night, about how his son suddenly took up piano and he's uh, experimenting and looking for his way. And I want him to know that the lion's mane can help that child. It says it can help that child find its proper expression, full expression. 
Okay, uh, we are, there's an anti-anxiety, it supports the nervous system, and it's an immunomodulator. So this is what happened in February when I asked, how can your energies be helpful to children and people with autism? Muscle, muscle instability, anxiety, and also we can assist with coordination, muscular coordination, coordination with the hand and the eye. Look here and move here. Grasp here. Now let go and pull the arm away. We facilitate this process. Some increase in walking strength, direction, each part of the foot. Less flapping of feet. Better balance too, but this is a smaller effect. A push-through kind of muscle we can assist with as well. A strength of intent. We are happy to lend our energies and our efforts in the children who are feeling pulled like puppets. And sometimes they do not feel pulled, but those who observe them see them as though on strings. Lion's mane. Cordyceps sinensis. This is one of the fabulous four. Uh, it is a very, very powerful uh, immunostimulant. Uh, it's been used also for thousands of years. There are over 35 strains of cordyceps. Sinensis is the most studied and the most well-known. <clears throat> they grow, you can see here, uh, they grow out of the uh, heads of these caterpillars. Different strains grow on different kinds of insects. Um, and they've just been, we've just in the last maybe 30 years really made some progress in uh, cultivating them. They boost the depressed immune system, but it does not stimulate normal functioning system. And it becomes an immune suppressive in large amounts. Research shows cordyceps to be effective in treating various cancers. It may be useful in anti-aging, nerve development, and protection. It increases energy, reduces cholesterol, is effective in treating viral hepatitis and various conditions of heart disease. It is effective in sexual dysfunction, and it is called fungal Viagra. It's available in... Um, I'm not advertising these people. They were just available on the, <laughs> online. Um, it's available in supplements only. And you're going to find it in every immunostimulant mushroom combination. Uh, my chief abilities and contributions for those with autism are with the immune system. In combination with my cousins, I am joyful in bringing together energy patterns to staunch the inflammation, infection, disorder, and dysfunction of the body's parts and systems. Note that we are emblazoned with the color of the warrior and the brightness of our color potentiates and stimulates the body's own receptivity to fight and overcome. We are not gentle curators, as are our mushroom allies, but forceful and deep-reaching in our influences. Cordyceps. Shaggy mane. This is the one that grows in your yard. And this uh, drawing by Max Vosnester, who went to high school with his mom, <laughs> shows how it degrades in your yard and turns black. If you pick it early, before it turns black, you can keep it... and soak it in water, you can keep it for three or four days. <clears throat> Don't pick it if it's by the highway or some kind of plant that puts out toxic air. Well, I have seen since I've been here the words gram-positive bacteria, antifungal, antioxidant. Look at this, 100% inhibition of Ehrlich carcinoma cancer cell lines. It's an antibacterial used to street, treat streptococcus and has potential for use against candida. Behavioral effects. Fellowship is one gift I give to those who are with the autism. More getting along with others' ways. Less resistance less pushing away, and I am gentle on the system. Forgiveness is also an element in my little black bag. 
Though if there is guilt, sometimes the one who has need for forgiving is the self in humans. We ourselves have no need to forgive. But we watch these interrelationships and see so much suffering because of the ways humans hold that events, ways, beings ought to be. It saddens us to see this when so much of living, of beingness and aliveness is such a joy. Enjoy. Enjoyment is the state of being of most of the world that we know. Shaggy Maine. I asked these mushrooms if they had anything for me to say, deliver any message for the parents. And um, I was very moved by this. And it's a little long, uh, but I want to share it with you. And when I asked who said, what mushroom sent this message, there was a band across my lower vision here, and just mushroom after mushroom after mushroom after mushroom, and not just the nine that we have here. But I felt like the mushroom kingdom was bringing this message to all of us. How doth love penetrate the isolation? By its pervasiveness. It permeates all. Nothing withstands love. Loving touch is so important, even when the child resists. Loving looking, even from behind the child's back. Loving thoughts, not just worry, fear, need to prevent, need to protect, need to be on alert, need to control. I need to, I have to, I must. To simply sit or stand and look and send forth this love which is there. Sending this love, projecting this feeling. Feeling a softening of perception and in its own way a protection. This will ease the mother, the father, the sister, the brother. To be in love in the presence of that child who closes out love and touch and looking into the eyes, that will ease all, cause a relaxation of worry and fear. And above all, the child will feel it. No signal or knowledge or acceptance may be evident, but the feeling, the energy, vibration, impact of love will be received. It will raise the aliveness, the awareness, Encourage the seed of love that is so needful of light and nourishing. We want to say love is all you need, but we know it is not true for the little ones. They need food, they need medication, they need training and treatment and protection and transportation and discipline and encouragement and much attention. We, these we see humans give. Yet sometimes the giving of love the communication of love is left out, falls away because the obligation is so difficult. Love is a harbor of safe rest and nothing, nothing else can fit into the receptors of love. Who has the signal that fits these receptors? Only the mother, the father, the grandparents, sisters and brothers, the teachers who see the beautiful soul residing in body and mind. Love. You can give it for free. Feel it and give it away. It is stored within you. Do not doubt. Open your eyes, your heart, and let it out. Our love we send to all who meet in the swirling world of autism. Draw any little mushroom. Every time your eyes alight there, send a little love. Every arrow of love pierces the armor of autism. Oh, this is my commercial pitch. These are our products. I'm not here to sell, but, you know, my, my inside self does tell you this, to protect my financial well-being. And a portion of all our sales support Mushrooms in Ghana Project. Thank you. Please use your discernment. <laughs> Let me know what you know. <laughs> yes. Thank you.
Would you pass these out? Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Isn't it? Me too. It staggers me also. Yeah. Their love for us. Yes, Janet. Um, yes, there's a list up here. Please, I will email it to you. Sorry. Whoops. Well, I didn't make enough. 